This is the introduction to surface modeling using points and curves. Um, you can make a lot of geometry using just these few elements. So let's start over here with surface from three or four corner points. Now obviously you need at least three points to start making a surface. If I just had two points here there is no way I can make a surface. I could make a line, a curve, an arc, etc., but not a surface. So I need at least three points. So let's do that first, and that can be found here: surface from three or four corner points. So first, let's make a make sure our point snap is on here, and let's make a surface from three corner points: first point, second point, third point, and press done or enter, and. Let me delete that and do that again, spacebar to repeat that command. One point, two points, three points, and four points. And so this surface will be planar, in other words, two-dimensional, and it's on the, if we look at the top view, we'll see that it's on the XY plane. Let me turn on shading here as well. Okay, I'm going to go back to my, all my views. Actually, let's go back to perspective. So that's surface from three or four corner points. Um, the next one we're going to look at is surface from planar curves. And you can see that these curves are planar. They're two-dimensional. And um, these are all closed curves. So let's select this uh, blobby one first. And we're going to say surf, uh, planar surface. And there we go, there's our surface. And I can quickly do that with the rest of these by just selecting them and pressing spacebar, select spacebar, select spacebar. One thing to remember about surface on planar curves is that my curves have to be closed. For example, these two arcs are both planar but they are not they do not form a closed curve so if I select these and try to planar surface them you'll see that no faces were made curves must form a closed planar loop um, so that's just something to keep in mind the next extrusion method we're going to look at is extrude straight pretty straightforward extrusion method so let's select this geometry first and we can go down here to extrude, extrude straight. And we have a few options. We can go into both sides, which means that we'll be extruding into the positive and the negative of the z-axis. So you can see I'm going into the negative there and to the positive. I can also elect to have it solid. So that's going to give me a closed um, extrusion. And I can also select delete inputs. I usually don't do this because I like to keep my curves so that I can use that geometry again for different extrusions. Um, for now let's not do both sides and let's not do solid and I will just extrude this curve over here. Let's do the same here but let's um, close this one so spacebar and this time I'm going to say solid and there we go. Let me put this on ghosted so you can see the inside. So you can see that's a closed solid. And then we can also extrude multiple geometries at the same time. I'm selecting all these circles. And this time I'm actually just going to type in extrude curve. And you'll see that we can extrude them at the same time. Another trick is to use the gumball for extrusion. So in the gumball, you have the arrows that point that tell you how I can move this geometry in the different axes. These arcs are for rotation and the boxes are for resizing. And you'll see that on the z-axis we have this little blue dot here. Now if I hold down option and I drag this up, it will extrude those curves straight. I can also do that separately in separate heights. For example, I might want that one here this one here, and another one here. So that's extrude straight. Let's look at the next method, which is extrude along a curve. So I have this profile curve here, 
and I have another curve going straight up here, sort of a slinky curve that's going up. So let's go to the icon menu first, extrude along curve. So it wants me to uh, select the curve that I want to extrude, and that's this curve. And I say done, and now it's saying select path curve near the start. So the start, I'm going to say the start is here, so I want it to follow this curve. So as soon as I click here, you'll see that it will follow that path. The next method is extrude to point. I'm going to play, place a few points above these uh, bits of geometry. So let's start with the circle. I'm going to type in point, and I'm going to put it in the center of the point. Let's try that again, into the center. Select that, and I'm going to hold down Shift, and I'm going to use my um, gumball and just drag that up into the y-axis. And let's do the same here, make a point. But this time I'm going to make a point at this midpoint here. And let's also move that point in the y-direction. Okay, so now I can select this circle here and I can extrude to point and if I snap to this point here you'll see that it extruded the circle and followed um, this extrusion to that point. Let's try the same with the rectangle, extrude to point and there we go, we have sort of a skew little pyramid there. And we can also do that with uh, something like an arc. So let's make another point in the quadrant, select that point, move it up into Y. Let's make this one really tall. And I'm going to say extrude to point and select that point over there. And you'll see that it extruded that. There are two types of sweep rail commands. This sweep one rail and sweep two rail. Sweep one rail means I am sweeping following one rail and here I will demonstrate two profile curves following one rail. We can also do a sweep two rail. We're going to be sweeping this curve here following this rail and this rail. So let's look at sweep one rail first. So I'm going to type in sweep one. This is my rail and this is my cross section curve. And now it's going to, it's saying drag seam point to adjust. Right now my seam point is in this direction. In this case, it doesn't matter. There might be other um, times where that does matter. I can also flip that arrow or that seam right here. But for now, let's just keep it in this direction. And I say done. And there is my sweep one rail. We're going to look at these rail options a little bit later, but for now, I just wanted to demonstrate this sweep one rail. So let's sweep that. Let's sweep one rail using two of these curves. So sweep one. I'm going to select my rail here. And these are my cross section curves, this one and this one. And I will sweep that so we can see it's a little bit of a different result because I'm going from a larger curve here to a smaller one and it's following that uh, rail over there. And now sweep two rail is simply sweep two. This is my first rail, this is my second rail, and I'm going to select the cross section curves. And I also just want to point out um, this curve and this curve, they were touching that rail there, but you can also sweep um, with curves that are not touching, and that's so, so I put this curve here not touching these two, two um, rails, and it will still sweep. Of course, it will start at the beginning and the end of your actual cross-section curve and not the rails that you're following. The rails are just the guides. So there we have sweep to rail. There are different ways to loft curves. So let's start with this one here. So I created this just by using one curve. And I'll show you real quickly how I did that. I created a circle. I used my gumball and I held down Option and dragged this up to make a few copies. So 
and then I held on shift I made that one a little smaller and then I dragged one of these smaller ones up here and then I used this one and I dragged that up there so that's how I sort of created these four circles right on top of each other so I'm going to leave those and let's type in loft select curves to loft this one this one this one and this one and let's say done now you'll see that it's telling me where the seam points are so I want these to go in the same direction and I'll just say done and you'll see we have a nice vase shaped very easy to make just with a few curves and let's loft that here we go um, also remember you can turn off your ISO curves by selecting your extrusion and going to your properties panel objects and down here you see ISO curve density I can add more ISO curves or I can say I don't want to see the ISO curves and that really sort of shows you here's the seam and here are the three curves I used to loft so I lofted the surface between this curve this one this one and this one following this seam here we can also loft between different shapes of geometry for example I have a rectangle a circle another rectangle here so let's try that loft I'm going to select my curves in the order that I want to select them I can see my seam points are in the same direction and let's loft that and there we go now let's see what happens if we select these out of order so loft let's say I select the middle one first the top one and then the bottom one you will see that you have a very different result this might be what you want but in most cases I would say that you would select the curves very deliberately in the order that you want so I'm going to undo that and let's do one more loft where we where we change the one of the seam points let's flip this one here and maybe this one here and see what happens this is a common mistake and you'll see that this is definitely not a desired result so you want to make sure that your seams are in the same point pointing in the same direction so let's do that one more time this one this one this one done and done there we go and lastly we can also loft between two open curves so loft this curve this curve and we are done another quick and easy way to make surfaces are from edge curves and we can do a surface from two three or four edge curves here we have two planar curves so I can go here and say surface from two three or four edge curves and the command for that is edge surface and here I'm going to select these two curves and it will create a nice planar surface right there let's try this with four curves so spacebar and I'm going to just select all these and there we go it followed these uh, profile curves and created that surface and that's a pretty easy way to make some surfaces as well